Hi, welcome back to this third session on Genesis 1, this rich chapter here at the beginning of the beginning, the beginning of the book of beginnings, which is, of course, Genesis. And you remember what Genesis means, right? Genesis is a Greek word which means beginning. And you have memorized Genesis 1-1, right? Let's hear it. I heard from most of you, but there's some of you who are still a little rusty. It's in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And some of you have also decided to memorize 1 verse 26 or 1 verse 27, the verse that says He created man in His image. Uh, male and female He created them. And we talked about that last time, the importance of God creating both male and female human beings. Well, in this particular section, I want to talk to you about the fact that here in the book of Genesis, the very first book, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of the world, is already present. Um, now, of course, the name Jesus Christ does not appear in Genesis 1-1, but those of us in the Christian tradition know very well that He is indeed there. Um, there's a number of ways we know that. Uh, in the book of Revelation, Jesus says, I am the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. There's, Alpha and Omega are the, the, the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. It's as if Christ were saying, I am the A and I am the Z, the beginning and the end. But here's another passage that's pretty rich and is very explicit and clear about Christ being there at creation. I'll read to you. It's from, uh, uh, I'll read to you from the book of Colossians, chapter 1 and verse 16. I'll, I'll actually start at verse 15. Great passage. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Now, that's interesting. Notice the phrase, image of God. And this is speaking about Jesus. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, such that when we see Jesus, we're seeing God. Now, you might think, well, that might just make him like another human being, because aren't we human beings also created in the image of God? That's true. But Jesus is the image of God. He's not just an image of God. He is particularly and specially the image of God. And we know this because of a lot of other things the Bible says, including the next verse, verse 16. We read this. For by Him all things were created. Ah, so He's not just a creature. He is actually a creator. That's a clue. For by Him all things were created, things in heaven and on the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and Jesus is responsible for that? Hmm. For by Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. That's interesting. Not just the things that we can see, but apparently there are things that we can't see. Now you might think, well, that's the sky, that's the air, but perhaps there are other invisible beings like angels, that He also is responsible for creating. And He says, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, and that might have a reference to heavenly rulers and authorities, angels. And then we read, all things were created by Him and for Him, indicating a kind of lordship or kingship that Jesus Christ as a creator has over all things in heaven and on earth. Isn't that amazing? That's who Christ is. And then in verse 17, just to make it crystal clear, Paul, who the Apostle Paul, who has written this book, the book of Colossians, he, he writes this, He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. So not only is Christ identified as the Creator God, He's indicated as the Sustainer God. He's the one who not only created the world, he keeps it together. He sustains it. And some have wondered, even when you study chemistry and you go deep, deep down into matter, it's kind of mysterious how even the atom holds together, why the electrons don't just fly off of the nucleus as they circle the atom. And I know some of you, probably most of you, haven't studied chemistry yet, but there's something mysterious about this. Somehow, Christ is the sustaining power of all things. And if He's the sustaining power of the entire universe, 
Could he not be the sustaining power over your own life? This creator God, if he's also your redeemer and you name Christ as your redeemer, what a powerful God you know and how wonderful it is to know that your life is in his hands and in his care. What a great way to start your study of the Bible, to look at Genesis chapter 1 and all ready to see Christ present. Well, enjoy the rest of your study, and I'll see you next time for chapter 2.